Hello everyone, good morning. Um, good afternoon, good morning, whenever it is that you see this video. So today in this video, I wanted to go over uh, some clarification on what are spirit guides versus guardians versus ancestors versus a uh, many different things because I'm noticing, good morning, um, this is being done live, so please bear with me as everyone jumps on the live. So I will post this replay in my YouTube channel as well as on Instagram, if Instagram allows me to. But I wanted to come live this morning to explain what's called the ladder of ascension, okay? A lot of people um, don't know where certain spirits are located, where certain uh, guides and guardians are located on the ladder of ascension. So I decided to sit down with my spirit guides this morning and my um, and Archangel Michael and ask, good morning, ask them to kind of break it down. Now I understand there's different practices out there and there's different spiritual beliefs, different religious beliefs, but this is how um, they explain it to me as a medium and as a spiritist and as an angel channel so that I would be able to explain it to you in a way that would make sense, okay? Now, like I said, there's other spiritual beliefs, there's other spiritual practices out there. There's other um, people out there that have different beliefs, right? Other religions. This is how I'm coming with this explanation from a point of view of a spiritist and a angel channel and um, a medium, okay? And these are different things. Uh, for those of you who are new, I am initiated. I have been initiated for a really long time as a mambo, which is a high priestess in the 21 divisions, which is the a Caribbean version of um, or Dominican Republic version of African voodoo mixed with indigenous practices, okay? So that's just a little summary. I have other information on what 21 Divisions is on my YouTube channel and on my Instagram. But today we're gonna talk about the ladder of ascension, okay? So I have this written down for you so I know like I can explain a little bit. Now, ascension is based on frequencies, okay? So frequencies are based on levels of elevation, levels of um, bene benevolence versus, I would say, beings who have already learned certain lessons and are no longer no longer need to reincarnate on Earth again to learn these lessons again. So, um, and some of these beings never even incarnated; they never went through the human experience. Okay, so here's what I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just go through the ladder. On the very, very top of the ladder, right? So if we go from God down, on the very top of the ladder, we have what's called the God and Goddess King and Queen, okay? So we know there are other gods and goddesses in the world, but they are seen to be below, right below the King and Queen of, of, of the gods. So we have the God and Goddess, King and Queen. These Some people may see these as the sun and the moon, um, energies, okay? So this is the God and Goddess, King and Queen, creators of everything, um, that type of energy. Then right below it, you have the old gods, which are like, you know, Aphrodite and um, any of the Norse gods or Roman gods or um, any of the uh, African gods or Egyptian gods or whatever, you get my point. So you have the god and goddess, king and queen on the top. Then right underneath that, you have what's known as the old gods. Then below that, you have the demigods, okay? So this would be somebody like, if if you perceive Yeshua to have been more than an ascended master and to have been like half god, half human, because he was he was conceived of a, of a, of a human woman and um, his father was god, then if you perceive Yeshua to be in that ability, then Jeshua would be here as part of the demigods. Um, when I say Jeshua, I'm talking about what people know as Jesus. Now, 
another demigod you may know is Hercules because he was the son of a human woman and um his mother and his father was Zeus the god the god of the Roman pantheon okay I believe Roman or Greek um so you have demigods here then you have angels that don't deal with humans so these would be like throne angels um ophanim the cherubim these angels that don't deal with humans at all they don't they don't care their job is to deal with other aspects of the universe and they don't deal with humanity okay then under there you have um the archangels and the angels of death okay so under the angels that don't deal with humans, <laughs> then you have the beings that's the first beings that actually start to deal with humans and human affairs, and that is the archangels and angels of death. Okay. Then under there you have spirit guides and guardians. Under the archangels and angels of death, you have spirit guides and guardians. Some examples of a spirit guide. A spirit guide is like a mystery or a loa. Okay, where a guardian would be like an orisha, for example. Orishas are guardians of the head. That is literally what the word orisha means. It means guardian of the ori, which is the ori is your crown, okay? And mysteries are on the same level as them, but they're not the same. The mysteries or the loases are seen more as um, ascended spirit guides that are that have the same power as the orisha, but are not, they don't have the same purpose or the same um design if that makes sense they each have their own job so orishas are more guardians whereas mysteries get more involved in your human day-to-day -day life and they they guide you both of them guide you in in some aspect okay um mysteries are more involved in your guidance um other spirit guides are more involved in your guidance in this area right here of spirit guides and guardians, you can also include your own cultural guardians if you don't practice like the Vudun or or Orisha practices. There's other spirit guides out there, okay? So in that area, in spirit guides and guardians, you would include whatever your cultural spirit guides are. Then underneath that, you have what's called the deified ancestors. In my tradition, for example, that would be at that would be like the barons, um, the Gedeses, and the madamas. They are responsible for taking care of the dead, people who travel. They're the ones that pick up dead spirits, um, who's, who pick up the dead who are in this particular practices. Um, they are believed to be the guardians of the cemetery. They are believed to be responsible for for the cemetery and the upkeep of the cemetery and the spiritual realm and, and the and the kind of like the travel between the, the realm of the of the dead and the living, okay? So that would be like the deified ancestors. Um, again, those would be like the barons, the Gedeses, the, the Madamas, just an, as an example, okay? Then you have, um, now when I say spirit guides up here, spirit guides, like if uh, an example is a mystery, right? Mysteries have different elevations as well. Some mysteries are Radha, which are more benevolent, and then you have um, petroloases, which are more fiery. They're more, um, they're more, they kind of balance off the radaloases. They're not bad, but they also tend to be um, much more strict and much more um, on, like, they will, if you don't listen, like, you're going to get yourself nipped, <laughs> okay? So... You have a, in the mysteries you have the Radha, which are the the very the much higher perceived to be higher elevated than the Petro. Um, then you have underneath the deified ancestors, right? So we went spirit guides, guardians, deified ancestors. Then we have our ancestors. These are our own lineage ancestors. Now, most ancestors are four generations and up. Okay. So if you have, for example, your grandmother who lived in your same lifetime, unless she's been dead for over 20 years or so, we usually don't see her as an ancestor. Usually it's around the 20 year mark of their passing, 20 years, 25 years, that they start to move into their elevation as an ancestor. But they're not ancestors yet, unless they've been dead for over 
almost three decades, okay? And that is um, an, an ancestral spirit that's above like four generations usually, um, okay? Then underneath the ancestors, you have what's known as the dearly departed or loved ones. So these are being, these are, these are, um, your, your loved ones that have passed on the other side. These are like cousins, brothers, sisters. Um, it can be your mother or father, your ancestors, your, I'm um, not your ancestors, your grandpa grandparents, if your grandparents are not yet on the ancestral path. Okay. Because there's different levels of elevation on the other side. Then, so your dearly departed are right below your ancestors. You can put your dearly departed on the same altar as your ancestor altar, but understand that they're different and they have different levels of elevation. Then underneath the dearly departed, you have what's known as the nature spirits. So spirits such as like fairies, um, spirits such as like mermaids, such as dragon energies, such as... Um, and um, plant spirits, um, those spirits are underneath what you would call the ancestral and the dearly departed realm in the sense of elevation. They're higher elevated than us, but they're kind of in between the the ancestral realm and the um, the our realm. Okay, but so underneath the dearly departed, you have the nature spirits, the animal spirits. Uh, plant spirits, all those kinds of things. That's why they can help us in our magic because they are slightly higher elevated than us. So they have a little bit more poof, a little bit more energy when it comes to helping with situations in the spiritual realm and turning spiritual situations into physical situations, okay? Then you have, underneath them, you have the lost and in tranquil spirits. Now, these are the lost and in tranquil spirits that really don't um, have any bad intentions towards others. They're just lost. They are just trying to find their way. They're not really, um, they're in tranquil because they have unfinished business. So this is, would be considered the limbo realm, okay? So limbo realm. This right here is the limbo realm. The lost and in tranquil spirits, some spirits that are still awaiting judgment, some spirits that are still awaiting to go on the the path of the um who just passed away like within the last 90 days and are awaiting um their elevation. So they're waiting for their family to do their elevation prayers, they're like that kind of stuff. Okay. If you haven't um you could I guess you could say some of the malevolent um the bad ancestors are here as well still because they're still stuck in limbo they're still if you haven't done work it's believed in my tradition that if you haven't done work to elevate these malevolent ancestors um they just stay in the limbo realm okay they just kind of stay in the limbo realm then you have the veil so underneath that lost ancestor spirits in tranquil spirits limbo realm you have the veil okay the veil of what of the living and the dead then there's us humans okay <laughs> and then underneath us there is another veil okay because as above so below um there is the same hierarchy on the on the demonic side or the lower vibrational side as our as as we are in the middle okay we are in the middle of these two veils so as above so below okay so you have the kind of a similar breakdown as you go down the ladder into the underworld okay like in and the underworld is not necessarily because this is kind of seen as the underworld as well up here and the underworld is also here but there's different levels of like Benef benevolent and these would be like what you would consider the bad intended spirits right so down here you would have the the bad spirits the shadow energies um vampires energy vampires demonic entities that have evil intention um those those kind of energies okay lower vibrational energies so these lower vibrational energies kind of are like more on the levels of like anger, not that anger is bad, but on the levels of like um, cruelty and anger and 
um, more uh, just bad intended towards humans and other energies. So that's where they're kind of they're underneath they're underneath this veil here because they are considered to be less elevated than us. Okay, we are in the middle here trying to get ourselves up here, hopefully. <laughs> um, whereas they they are under they're under they're considered part of the underworld realm, right? So many traditions have what we call like a hell, right? But in reality, these energies, they dwell within the human realm. These hell energies that people want to talk about, they kind of dwell in the human realm. They're kind of like on earth um, and they're always constantly trying to um, test us, okay? Um, and different people have different beliefs, right? But most humans don't end up down here. <laughs> like the people who humans who end up like down here <laughs> are usually humans that are extremely cruel like um let me say hitler for example who murdered millions of people right or thousands of people um the people like um you know those like politicians that just murder and 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 do all these terrible things to people most humans as long as you're a good person and you do what's fair most humans will end up up here somewhere and then you'll have different levels of elevation or you'll have reincarnations that happen over and over again to get you f because god wants us to move up this way okay that's the whole point like we, god wants us to move up this way but it's up to uh, to us and what we do in different incarnations how quickly we move up this ladder all right so that's that for example you have um archangel metatron who was known as the scribe enoch before he ascended up the ladder to becoming an archangel and becoming known as like the voice of god then you have archangel sandalphon for example he was a human he incarnated as a human as well one of, um one of the few archangels that actually incarnated and um elevated himself back up to archangel so that's kind of the explanation that's really the easiest way that i can explain it obviously the spiritual world is much more complicated than this but understand that everything that is above us there's also a reflection below us okay everything as above so below okay that's why we have both um a shadow and light as humans because we have both aspects and our life as humans is meant to put us in balance between our shadow and our light so you know a lot of religions will be like oh my god you're gonna end up down here but that's really not realistic um because most of most of humans most of the human experience is really these beings some of them some of them not all of them some of them like reincarnating as humans and most of them are new souls that are being tested here on earth in order to either rise up the ladder or if you're really really bad like mr hitler you go down here so that's pretty much the best way i can explain it obviously it's much more complicated than that and there's other um professional opinions out there but i'm giving you my opinion based on what my spirit guides have shown me and it's kind of like the the ladder of ascension okay all right thank you for joining me this morning i hope you have a wonderful sunday or a wonderful day um whenever it is that you see this many blessings and i hope you have a great day bye, -bye. you're welcome <laughs>